Hi, I'm Corey, and this is my secret story, number three. I'm seven years old, and I'm pacing around my friend's kitchen. There's eight of us there, and we're all staring at the basement door. It's shut, and it's locked, and my older brother Chris is down there. This is it. I know this is when he dies. This is when he gets eaten by the creature Magumbo. Magumbo is the forest beast that our friend's dad, Fred, told us about. Magumbo ate his friend Bert when they were kids, and Fred said he's still hungry for children. But Fred said we could train to defeat Magumbo. In our tribe, we could complete various tests to rise in rank. Tests that would include things like running down a dark alley, touching a tree, and coming back. And everyone kept track of their ranks based on the tests they completed. Some of the other kids don't believe in him, but I know he's real. Because I'm a cautious kid. I'm scared all of the time. But that's kept me safe. I'm the type of kid that when something looks fun to a group of young boys, I'm the one to say, I don't know about this, guys. So much so that they'd get annoyed with me. I had never completed a test. I was at the bottom. I acted like I was okay with it, but I wasn't. I was just too scared. It just wasn't safe. And what's happening now is definitely not safe. My brother Chris is down in the basement trying to complete the basement test. This is where you had to go down into the basement by yourself and sit in the dark for two whole minutes. Fred would shut the door behind you and you were on your own. No one had ever completed the basement test. The kids didn't think it was possible. And no one really thought that anything was down there. But every time someone tried to complete the basement test, they always heard sounds and they would always come running up the stairs and they would hear footsteps behind them. We all thought it was Fred who was doing this, but Fred would lock himself in the first floor bathroom. It was impossible. We knew he wasn't involved. What we didn't know is that the first floor bathroom had a closet, and in that closet on the floor was a wooden hatch. And if you opened up the wooden hatch, there was a hole leading down into the laundry room. And this hole was big enough for a human the size of a mischievous adult man to drop down into the basement and make noises around the child trying to complete the basement test. <laughs> we didn't stand a chance. But my brother Chris is very logical, and he knows that nothing can possibly be down there, no matter what his ears tell him. So he believes he can do it. He can beat the basement test. And the other boys think so too. I think that he's gone forever. But before I know it, the two minutes is up, he's running up the stairs, we open the door for him and he's done it. He's completed the basement test, we all cheer. And then Fred comes out of the bathroom and gives him his heartfelt congratulations, albeit surprised. This propelled my brother to the top of the ranks. He is now the top Magumbo warrior in the group. We were a group that did everything together. We rode bikes, we played kick the can, we played Little League together, we went camping, we even all would go to drive-in movies in a big GMC conversion van. It was magical. But nothing was more magical than a sleep overnight. Fred has three boys and each one was allowed two to three friends so there'd always be about nine of us. And we knew what would happen on a sleep overnight. After laying out our sleeping bags in the living room by the TV, We'd all climb into that conversion van and go to Blockbuster Video and get to rent two movies, one horror and one comedy. We'd all have to come to a consensus on which one that would be. We all knew that after the horror movie, we would try and complete Magumbo Warrior tests. Then we'd all settle down and watch a comedy and fall asleep. 
Fred enjoyed scaring us, but he definitely didn't want us up all night. Neither did his wife. After Blockbuster, we'd all walk to the grocery store next door and get to pick out one item of candy. This is where some kids took advantage of the loophole and would grab a variety bag. It all came in one bag, so technically one item of candy. But Fred would let it slide. He appreciated the resourcefulness. After we secured our bounties, we would come back to the house and we'd watch the horror movie. Fred made us promise that if it ever got too violent or if boobs fell out of a blouse, we would cover our eyes. One time I remember peeking out from behind my eyes to see the boobs, and they were more overwhelming to me than Freddy Krueger. I'm not sure anything's changed. These sleepovers were everything to us. But tonight was different. Tonight, everyone was pushing me to complete a test. I don't think that I can. But Chris, the top Magumbo warrior, says that he can help me. Fred says he knows of a test specifically for a duo. But no one's ever done it before. It's so dangerous that no one has ever dared to try it. He calls it the run around the house in a circle test. Chris said that we could do it. He reminded me that the backyard is lit up and it's safe and that the front yard is also lit up by streetlights and, and it's open so we could run away if we need to. It's just the sides of the house that we need to worry about. They're narrow and surrounded by hedges and pitch black, a dangerous bottleneck, but they were short in length. Chris said we could handle the risk. We could do it. We could complete this test. I don't know why, but I believe him. And I desperately want to move up in rank. So I take a breath and Fred lets us out the sliding glass patio doors into the backyard. I feel the cold air on my face as we start running and everything's fine. The backyard is safe. I, I know this well. But then we have to go around the first side of the house. It's so dark. But before we know it, we're through it. We're in the front yard. We're in the safety of the front yard. We're, we're halfway there. But now it's time for the second side of the house. We have to get through it to get back to the sliding glass patio doors, to get back to safety. It's so dark between these hedges, but it's short. We can make it. There's no turning back now. We have to go this way. We run into the dark. I can see the backyard on the other side, a literal light at the end of the tunnel. And the light is getting closer. I can see it. We're almost there and everything looks like it's going to be okay, but then it happens. Magumbo jumps out of the hedges. I scream and so does Chris. I can't believe that he's real. He's, he's big and way faster than I expected and blurry and I cover my eyes and I think this is when we die and it's all my fault. But then I hear Chris start laughing and pulling at my hands and I peek and I see that it's just Fred who's jumped out of the hedges and I start laughing and then Fred starts laughing and we're all laughing and it's exhilarating. And then me and Chris run to the backyard and up through the sliding glass patio doors and launch ourselves into the safety of the light. Fred comes in behind us and shuts the door. He looks at me and says, you just moved up three ranks. The other kids all saw what happened and they're not that impressed. And I know I'm not a McGumbo warrior yet. And I know I probably never will be. But I think the things that I'm afraid of, maybe they look a little bit different once I get the courage to face them.